in Sunday school. It's time. Uh, and we're so glad that you have joined us for Sunday school today. And what a joy it is to have you as a part of our lives and allowing us to be a part of your life. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. You say, Reverend Chief, but I've heard that a lot of times. Well, let's, I trust that you're going to hear that a lot more uh, as we proceed on this year. It's indeed a beautiful day outside. And thank you for sharing this first Sunday morning in April with the Mount Zion Church family. We want to begin the day by dedicating our broadcast, not in memory of, but in honor of, Mr. S.D. and Mrs. Annie Lois Hurd. 50 years of marriage on yesterday, and my God, what a great blessing that is. We are so excited for them and for what the Lord has done for them. Congratulations, Mr. S.D. and Mrs. Annie Lois Hurd, two of our very faithful members here at Mount Zion. Our prayers and blessings are for you always, and God knows we appreciate uh, the service and the impact you've made uh, at Mount Zion and in this community and ministry. And so, uh, happy anniversary. All right, I've been told uh, that there's another little note that I should mention, and that is uh, that Ms. Ms. K. Alexandra Shuford and another young lady whose name escapes me right now have made history at the Carver High School in that uh, they are the first of the female, all female drum majors for the high public high schools here in Montgomery, Alabama. So congratulations to my youngest daughter, Kay Alexandria Shuford, and another young lady who've made history in that they are uh, the female drum majors of Carver High School. There are no male drum majors this year at Carver High School. How about that? Uh, that's a first timer. Now you came for Sunday school. I'm ready for Sunday school. I hope you're ready for Sunday school. And we're talking about a leader uh, of a leader with humility or a leader of humility. I guess that would be the same. And so uh, let's talk about humility today. Father, thank you for the word of God and for the people of God who are listening to me in different places, homes, businesses, uh, nursing homes, hospitals, riding along in their cars. Maybe some are walking or doing something else. And we give you thanks for their presence today by radio, by Facebook, by Zoom, by conference call. And we thank you, oh God, uh, for saints, especially uh, a wonderful saint who provides this opportunity anonymously for us to air this radio broadcast. I give you praise today. May healing be on the bodies of those who are listening. Uh, in Jesus' name, we release healing by faith, O oh God, that people will testify that today they felt the power of the Almighty God, even as we're praying. I give you thanks right now in Jesus' mighty name. Give us your revelation. Give us your insight into the word of God, for this is your word. And give us, I pray, O oh God, humility of head and heart, so that we will not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And since we're talking about humility, you hear me often praying about, Lord, give us humility of head and heart, because if we are humble under the almighty hand of God, when we hear the word of God, we're not just wanting to be hearers with our ears, but we, if we are humble, then we will obey the word of God. And so when you talk about humility, remember, you're not talking about humility unless there is some obedience to the Almighty God that is accompanying uh, our humility. And so you will see today the humility of the disciples. You'll see this morning the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be blessed to understand that the disciples obeyed the Lord 
and the Lord Jesus obeyed the Father. And so because both are walking in humility, that should encourage you. Some people say, well, you know, we can't be like the Lord Jesus Christ. He was very God and very man, and we're very man and not very God. Listen, but we can humble ourselves under the almighty hand of God, and we can walk in humility, and God will bless us for walking in that humility. And so I'm going to be uh, reading from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Now this is uh, called the uh, beginning of the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. It was Jesus' last time to go into the city of Jerusalem uh, before he would be crucified on Friday and then resurrected that Sunday morning. And so this is a triumphant entry because the man was going uh, to, to, to receive victory, to purchase, if you will, victory, uh, to purchase triumph, to become a winner uh, for us, for the salvation of our souls, and of course, the resurrection. And so it's a very triumphant Sunday morning. Let's read the lesson, Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Now, we, it is always unclear whether or not Jesus had already talked to a man or whether he's just sending these uh, disciples on what we call a cold call, uh, sending them out and they didn't know who the person was they were going to be borrowing the donkey from. But the key point here is uh, they were going to obey. Look at verse 3. If anyone says to you uh, anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey. Now, I got to back up because the Lord just showed me something again. So not only would the disciples obey the, the Lord's voice, but the person or the owner who owned the donkeys, when they said to that man, the Lord has need of these, these two donkeys, uh, that man was going to obey the disciples' voice for the Lord, and he was going to let them go. And, so, and then, of course, Jesus was going to obey the prophetic utterance from Zechariah, and there are a lot of prophetic utterance in Zechariah about the triumphant entry about uh, his crucifixion, about him being sold for 30 pieces of silver. And so uh, everybody is in compliance. Wow, you know, I, I wished I could live to see uh, a week <laughs> where everybody was in compliance, where everybody was willing to obey the voice of the Lord. Me, you, you, me, everybody else. Uh, obeying the voice of of the Lord. Can you imagine what kind of miracles would take place if everybody obeyed the voice of God simultaneously? It's mesmerizing just the thought of that. Look at verse number six. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them, didn't have a saddle, so to make it, the ride a little more comfortable, they took their cloaks off because they understood Jesus wasn't an ordinary man now. They understood this was the Messiah, the son of the living God. And so they put their cloaks on that donkey so that Jesus would have a better ride. Now, the crowds, listen, it says a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Now, we call this Palm Sunday, and that's uh, really uh, next Sunday in, in the life of our, our Christian church, all right? The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Verse 10, when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, we're talking about a leader with humility. So let's start at the top. And, and well, that's how they, they don't tell us to do that. Instead of starting uh, at the top and coming down, that would be descending order. We'll start at the bottom and then go up. That's ascending order. And so first, the disciples receive the instruction. Let me ask you, are you willing to humble yourself under the almighty hand of God? Now, really, that really translates to this. Are you willing uh, to obey the Lord's voice? You can talk about, I've got humility. I'm, I, the Lord made me humble. Well, are you still humble? Are you still obeying the Lord? Uh, are you seeking to be present? And are you seeking to serve? Are you actively uh, obeying the Lord? Are you paying your tithes and your offering? Are you laying hands on the sick? Are you, are you believing the things of God according to the word of God? Are you practicing your faith? You know, there's a lot of things that we're commanded to do by God. Are you allowing your light to shine? Or as we would sing, are you letting your little light shine? Are you doing justly? Love and mercy or kindness and walking humbly with your God? Do you treat uh, your neighbor as you want to be treated yourself? Uh, humility is more than you just talking about it. Humility is about you walking in it. And you can't walk in humility unless you are obeying the voice of the Lord. And so the first uh, model of humility in the text today is the humility of Jesus' disciples who took him at his word. Uh, who He said to them, go over to these two disciples, go over in the village that is ahead of you and you're going to find a coat tied. Untie the coat. You're going to find a donkey and then you're going to find a coat next to him. Untie the donkey and the coat and bring both of them to me. Now, he doesn't give them any other instruction other than if anybody asks you why are you doing this, just say to them, the Lord has need of him, uh, has need of them. Now, listen to this. People are always saying, well, why are you doing that? Well, the Lord told us to do it. He told us to bless our enemies. He told us to pray for those that despitefully use us and persecute us. He told us to rejoice and be, be glad. Uh, when men revile us and persecute us and say all manner of evil against us. He told us to do it. He told us hmm, to feed the hungry. He told us to clothe the naked. He told us to bless the strangers, not just the ones from Ukraine, strangers from anywhere. He told us to do this. And so uh, as children of God, we have a divine uh, command and a human responsibility to respond to the Almighty God, to the Word of God. And when we do that, we're walking in humility. Listen, there are a lot of things in society that have been passed and made law uh, that are inconsistent, adversarial, directly opposing to the Word of God. And I'm not going to name anything right now, uh, but would be diabolically opposed to the word of God. And uh, there are some uh, well-meaning people who are endorsing those things, but here's what I got to say to you. You cannot endorse the opposite of what the Lord said and at the same time be walking in humility. No, you can't do that. In order to walk in humility before the Almighty God, you got to submit to God and you've got to walk therein. That's what the Lord is commanding you to do. So the disciples are our first uh, model in the lesson. The two disciples, they obeyed the Lord. They went over to the next village. Uh, I'm in Montgomery, so let's say uh, next village. I'm in Hardest State, so let's say I'll go over 
a short time, let's say, to Bel Air, the old Bel Air near Alabama State University. That'd be something, wouldn't it? I'd go over there and say, hey, the Lord said, uh, I need to borrow uh, your horse or your donkey or your car <laughs> in the modern day. And uh, not only that, but I need to borrow your extra one, too. I need to borrow your pristine one. Well, not your pristine. That'd be your horse. I need to borrow two of these vehicles that you have. Since you have three, the Lord says he has need of them today. I need to pick people up for church. Mm. Uh, everybody would probably be just like me. I'd probably say, well, I, I, I don't know about all that. You know, the Lord would have to speak to me on that. We'd, we'd have all kinds of excuses. But the Lord told the disciples to do it. And here's what I'm saying. The strange instructions are continuing to come. The strange instructions are continuing to come from the Lord. The Lord has always commanded people to do some strange things. Like uh, Noah, build me an ark. Build an ark? That is not even raining. But it's going to rain. Yeah, and it's going to rain 40 days and 40 nights. So I want you to preach that. I want you to build an ark at the same time. Or Abraham, I want you to leave your homeland, your family, your kindred. Leave all the folks you know. I got to take you to a place that you don't know anything about. And I'm going to give you a land. All right? I mean, it was awesome. And so uh, Isaac, stay in, in Gerar. Stay here because you don't need to go to Egypt. But wait, God, uh, Gerar is famished. That's nothing growing here. It's a drought. Uh, there's no waterfall and nothing is producing, but in Egypt has plenty of vegetation and crops growing. But God said, don't go over there to Egypt. You stay here where the famine is. You stay here where it's not raining. You stay here where the grass is already brown and it's supposed to be green. Uh, and the man stayed. And in one year, the Bible says, he planted his crops and God gave him a hundredfold. And so God has always given these strange instructions. And yet, the strange instructions that God gives, God turns it into miraculous acts by him. Uh, Moses, go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Really? You're going to send a fugitive back to Egypt? You're going to send a murderer back to Egypt? And you, who used to be a prince, that's not going to say, well, because they already told the Pharaoh and the prince that Moses killed that Egyptian and buried him in the sand. God provides, gives strange instructions, but he turns them into miraculous acts of deliverance and healing and, and power and promotion when his disciples obey. These two disciples went to that village. They had no trouble. Uh, they brought that donkey and the coat right on back to Jesus. And listen, uh, the second level of our uh, obedience here, so he spoke to the disciples. Let's go up a little bit. He spoke to the man. The disciples knew who Jesus was. We're not sure that the man who owned the donkey and the coat knew who the disciples were, nor we're not sure whether he knew who Jesus was. But the man obeyed, and he sent the donkey and the coat. Somebody said, well, I don't know about that because I just don't know it and I can't see it. You know, there are a lot of things you're not going to be able to see, but God calls you to obedience. God has called you to obedience. I confess to you, there are things that I have said that I know the Lord told me to say, not anything bad, uh, but prophetic things God told me to say. And I didn't understand how God was going to do that. But I just had to trust God that God would do whatever God was saying. And that's the end of that. And then God has baffled me that he would, he would do what he said, because some, some of those things usually require miraculous acts. And of course, God is still the miracle worker. And so you get the second uh, tier here, this man who is anonymous, who allowed his donkey and his coat to be the famous animals Jesus used to enter Jerusalem the last time. Then everybody comes away saying, I wish it had been my donkey. I wish it was my coat. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. 
when we don't obey the Lord, we come away wishing we had obeyed him because we look at somebody else and say, wow, look at how God blessed them. And sometimes the only thing God is saying to you is to humble yourself and walk in humility and let me use you in a strategic and a dynamic way. Now, of course, the last of uh, the obedience in in uh, the lesson. Well, let me, before I get to the last, let me talk about the donkey and the coat. Because here's another great uh, miracle of humility in the lesson. You know, to ride a coat that's never been written on, that coat and donkey are supposed to be buck, bucking and acting up. You're not supposed to show up as a stranger and have authority over those particular animals. And But listen, the donkey and the coat had an anointing on them, if you will. Because they cooperated, and there's no indication that there was a lack of cooperation from these two stubborn animals, one, of course, that has never been ridden before. And so what a dynamic uh, picture you get here of the Lord's authority and his power because the donkey and the coat obeyed, and they humbled, they were humble in that they submitted to the Lord sitting on, on them and riding them. Now, the rest of the disciples showed uh, their, their jubilee or jubilation of Jesus uh, coming into Jerusalem. Now, uh, I'll make that the last dynamic. Jesus humbled himself. All throughout the, the Gospels, we see Jesus humbling himself. Jesus said, I only say what the Father tells me to say. Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me to say. Jesus said, I and the Father are one, or the Father and I are one. Uh, you know, I only do uh, what pleases him. And we're going to send the Holy Spirit. The Father and I are sending the, are the Father sending the Holy Spirit in my name. The man was always submitted. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 talks about he did not count it robbery to be equal with God. It says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, uh, who in the form of God did not count it robbery to be equal with God, but emptied himself and took on the form of a servant, even uh, uh, of a man, of a servant, and became obedient unto death even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. So when you humble yourself, the Bible says, God will exalt you. Ooh, that's heavy. When you submit yourself to God, then God will elevate you. Now, there, there are times people uh, are put up by other people, okay? I got that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when God elevates you. Like Joseph down in Egypt. And the anointing that was on Joseph got Joseph out of the dungeon or the prison and then put Joseph as the second ruler in the kingdom. That was God uh, anointing him. The man stayed humble. He was faithful to God. He would not bother his boss, Potiphar's wife, and God honored that and exalted him. Or uh, God exalted Moses in the midst of the people. Moses obeyed God, did what God told him to do. God uh, exalted him. Joshua submitted to Moses, was Moses' assistant, and God exalted Joshua and the disciples. Uh, it took them some time. You know, they were, they were not infallible. They were definitely flawed. But in time, God developed them and he exalted them and gave them an anointing so that they could preach the gospel and teach the gospel and save the lost and heal the sick and raise the dead. So the word here is, if you humble yourself, uh, the Lord will exalt you. You can see it. And that's Jesus. That's that Philippians chapter 2 passage. He will exalt you. 
The Bible says what? Humble yourselves under the almighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due, due time. So, you know, exhortation, promotion is not always when you think you're supposed to get it. I had to learn that. Hello. Hello. Uh, Sometimes God wants you to simply walk a while longer in humility. Sometimes God wants you uh, to honor him a while longer in humility. But the Bible says, if you humble yourselves, he will exalt you. So God is not having forgotten about you. You know, it might, it's just not your time for God to work that thing out right now for you. So don't get discouraged and don't give up and don't uh, become negative. Walk in humility because when it's your time, guess what? When it's your time, it's your time. It's your season. What's that song somebody sings? It's your season to be blessed. When it's your season to be blessed, you look, God will exalt you when it's your season to be blessed. Nobody can stop God from blessing you, all right? Now, you don't want to compromise. I'm not talking about you compromising. There are people who believe that have to compromise. Do you see Jesus compromising? No, you don't. Do you see the disciples compromising the truth? No, you don't. Do you see other great leaders in Scripture compromising the truth uh, or the, the Word of God? No, you don't. But when God got ready, because they had humbled themselves under the almighty hand of God, when it was their time to be blessed, God raised them up and blessed them. And so, uh, humble yourselves under the almighty hand of God, be God's leader, walk in humility, and let God raise you up. Now, Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, and the people became ecstatic, as they uh, normally are. I watched, uh, I think, the last minute of the game last night uh, of North Carolina University and Duke University basketball in the Final Four. And, of course, North Carolina won by a few points. Coach uh, Krzyzewski, uh, his great 42 uh, years of coaching, are uh, over, and um, he's been the greatest college coach that, that they say ever, all right? Now, but I watched North Carolina celebrate as if they had already won the championship. I mean, people, I saw young folk, I saw middle-aged folk, I saw old folk. They were jumping up and down. They were celebrating as if they had won the championship. Well, they hadn't won the championship, but they had won a right to get to the championship, all right? Now, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, listen, he had not already conquered uh, death, hell, and the grave, uh, but the people were celebrating Hosanna. Oh, here comes the Savior. Save us now, and praises be to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I mean, they were having a frenzy. They were throwing their coats out in the road. They were cutting down palm branches. They were in a frenzy. And that's how I believe we always ought to be about the Lord Jesus Christ. Just, you know, listen, in, a, in a, uh, a posture or a state of mind of spiritual ecstasy, of a state of jubilation, a state of praise, uh, a, a place where we're exalting the Lord and we are celebrating the goodness of Jesus. Listen, unlike the people of the text, Christ has died for us. He has risen again. Jesus has gone to the cross, and he has risen again, has all power in his hand. He has saved us because he was willing to be the leader of humility. I want to exalt you because you are a leader of some, some kind. Maybe not in the church, maybe in the church, but in your home, in the community, in your family, you're a leader. And so I want to simply encourage you. Walk in humility, let God exalt you, and don't, don't believe anything else. Do it. M write it down. Walk in humility. Obey the Lord. Let God exalt you. And then celebrate the Lord. Now, the, here's the last thing this last minute that I've got. Uh, I like this part. Of, um, they ask, who is this? 
and there are so many different titles and names to, to uh, that point to Jesus Christ. Let's just say today, he's our savior and our Lord. He was our savior walking in humility. He became our Lord because he obeyed his father. That's our Sunday school lesson today. I want to invite you to share with us uh, in the 10 o'clock worship uh, this morning. And let's be excited that today is the day the Lord has made. Uh, we're going to have a great time. The Bethel Springs AME Zion Church in Hope Hall, Alabama. Our bishop will be there preaching in 2 o'clock service today uh, for their 156th church anniversary. Until 10, this is Claude Schubert, the members of the Mount Zion, AME Zion Church. We say blessings to you today, and we hope you'll join us again at 10 o'clock. Bye-bye.